Hi and welcome to the Cloaked Hedgehog's YouTube channel. Today I'm going to continue to talk about some of the sightings on the Dogman map and uh, today it's Oregon's turn. This next sighting was first posted at markminer.hubpages.com. It's no longer there but it can be found at dogmanresearch.com. In 2007, my fiancé and I decided to meet late at night and lay beneath the stars and make out. We decided to choose a place that was well lit but private, so we chose Monteith Park in Albany, Oregon, where the both of us live. At the park they have this wooden deck that juts out over the water, so we decided to lay there on some blankets. It was around one in the morning. I laid down the covers on the deck and we had just both snuggled into the blankets when we heard a very big splash in the water behind us. There was a really huge splash, like something really large jumped into the water. We jumped up real quick and looked over the railing at the water. Something about seven feet or longer that was black in color and had hair all over it. It swam clear around the deck. The deck is 14 feet wide and 25 feet long. It swam really fast and around the deck in about 20 seconds. In the process of getting to the bank on the side of the deck, it had grabbed a sleeping duck and bit into it whole. It then went onto the bank, breaking limbs and crunching on the duck. My fiancé was extremely frightened, as was I, but I wanted to see this thing up close. So I jiggled my keys over the deck to attract the thing. It then let out a very deep growl from the shadows of the trees, sort of like a dog does when you approach his bowl when he's eating, but times that by a thousand. Both of us were very concerned and scared crapless by now. I went over and grabbed the blankets to get out of there. Just as we turned to leave and go up the ramp and into the park, the growl got closer to us, but we lost sight of the thing. We took a few more steps up the ramp towards the park, then there was another growl. I don't know how to accurately describe this growl, but it was deep, guttural, almost from the very bowels of this thing. It held the tone of the blackest anger. It made both of our blood run cold. We both thought at that time that we were seriously gonna die. Anyhow, my fiancé and I took off running. The only thing I thought of was to protect her by running directly behind her and putting myself between her and the beast. I never told her, but where the ramp ends, there is foliage on both sides that lead down to the riverbanks. As I crossed the threshold of the ramp, I caught a glimpse of the beast to my left, standing by a tree. It was huge and the most evil thing I have ever seen. It reeked of wildness and had very angry eyes. This encounter comes from Paranormal Phenomena at about.com. There was a Christian revival headed by Jeff Fenhold, a born-again ex-heavy metal singer of Black Sabbath, post the obscure years at the fairgrounds of Klamath Falls, Oregon, in the late 1980s. A high school buddy and I had left the scene early as it was uncanny and scary, like a something wicked this way comes type of feel, and headed home in his truck along the south side bypass. Just as we were passing the Air Force Base heading south, we came across a snarling wolf-like creature at 60 miles per hour. After a frozen moment of the scariest face I have ever seen in the lights, a thud in real time brought us back to our senses and we pulled over. Still writhing in pain in the middle of the road, what had been eating a big pile of guts looked like a giant wolf that had queer human-like features. It had to have been six, seven feet long at least, but no one was getting close as terror and fear of violent death kept us at bay. Another truck sped by and finished it off, but sped off. We did examine it as close as we dared, a few feet away, and it was still a human-like, mostly huge wolf-like creature. Even when the initial terror let go of us, and we could be a bit more rational, we got the hell out of there a few minutes later because it all seemed to tie to that revival. 
And I must say, for at least a year, I thought that thing was going to jump out of a bush and eat me. This encounter strangely comes from BigfootEncounters.com and uh, it's also been on the SurvivalistBoards.com and, uh, and it's supposed to be of Bigfoot, but when you hear the story you're going to realize that what they were dealing with was probably worse than that. Everything about this story screams dogman. Back in the winter of 2001, my youngest son and I were on our way from Boise, Idaho to Medford, Oregon. We had taken a car trailer to his old place in Boise in order to haul his non-running jeep to his new place in Medford. We hid an area of heavy snow in the southern Cascades around 2 a.m. It took four to five minutes or so to get down the mountain. We had of course been drinking coffee to stay alert. About 25 miles west of the pass, it became obvious that the last few quarts of coffee had to be drained. We stopped at a wide spot in the road near a summer tourist haunt, deserted in winter. There was a gas station and ice cream joint on the west side of the road, closed this time of year, and no town or settlement within 30 miles. This is tall timber country and unsettled. Across the road is a small parking area for the ice cream joint. It is paved and about 200 feet wide and 80 feet deep. I pulled in and as I stepped out with a 45 on my hip, it occurred to me in a flash that grabbing the 590 Mossy would be good. As we walked to the far end of the area to be well off the road, the hair on my arms and the back of my neck stood on end. The area directly to our front was open with a depth of 50 yards and a width of 100 yards. The night was clear and cold, 8 to 10 inches of snow on the ground and with the moon almost full so we could see quite well. While standing and taking a leak with sun about 15 feet to my right, I saw as if springing from the earth in front of us across the open area. 10 or 12 creatures moving rapidly back and forth in a sort of a thatch weave pattern. These things, not human men, were close to 7 feet tall, thin, bipedal, with long arms, medium length grey fur and damned fast on their feet. I brought the shotgun up and slid the safety off as Sun was drawing his 45. I don't know if I can adequately explain the overwhelming feeling of menace, but here goes. I have been operating on pure instinct since I had stepped from the pickup. The rotten feeling hit me a split second before the things arrived. The feeling, instinct, was that we were prey and subject to a very bad death and to be slaughtered and eaten. Not a logical process gut feeling and massively overwhelming. As they were moving around in front of us, more appeared and mixed among them, all the while running about fast in front of us. Sun and I were backing toward the truck. I would not present my back to them, and some of them peeled off right and left in an encirclement movement. They were rolling in fast from the sides now. I could smell and feel their presence. We got into the truck, loaded on adrenaline and ready to kill, as we both knew we were in great danger. We piled into the truck, locked doors. I had keys out and ready as my butt near the seat. I had the engine lit, transmission in gear and gas pedal mashed in one motion. Adrenaline is great stuff. As we fled, yes, fled. Something very close by let out an undulating scream of rage and pain. I believe one or more of the group had gotten really close to us in their pursuit and I ran over the foot of one of them. Yeah, they were that close. We rolled on to the highway and I told Sun to watch the bed of the pickup as well as the trailer. He already was indexed to the rear with a shotgun. We hauled ass for at least 20 miles before the feeling of grave danger started to abate. The feeling that nailed both of us as we discussed soon afterward was one of being prey 
and soon to be slaughtered and eaten. I am not easily led, and neither believe or disbelieve all the Bigfoot, ghost and werewolf stuff. In fact, I am skeptical. Some was speaking with a co-worker about six months later who had grown up in Prospect, Oregon, about 30 miles south of Union Creek where the incident took place. He asked Jake if he had ever heard of any strange goings on in the area. Jake went to shy white and pretty much retold the above tale. He says to avoid the place at night. A family friend, a 25 years retired cop, not given to flights of fancy, and an excellent observer, had a tale very similar from a year before. I told my wife of this event, of course. She looked at me at the beginning as though I had developed a third eyeball in the center of my forehead. That was from shock. She did believe me, but did not wish to hear any details. She said the tale gave her chills. Me too. As I write this, the hair on the back of my neck and forearms is sticking up. I have not gone back to explore, and would not without a large group of shotgun and flamethrower equipped men with me. Sun and I are both sane, sober persons, and not taken to hysteria. We were wide, very wide awake as things transpired. We saw and smelled what was there. As a sidebar, neither of us heard footfalls from the creatures. They were silent until I heard one as we were getting the hell out of there. To my knowledge, and I have researched, there is nothing that matches these creatures, unless one considers old legends and folk tales of were creatures. To conclude, I have to fall back on Elma Keith's famous line, Hell, I was there. And now that we're sufficiently spooked for today, I'm going to stop here and, uh, and suggest that you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos. And take care and I'll see you next time.